Let's talk to Amanda Ursell now, who's a registered dietitian. There's a story that we picked up uh, just in the last couple of days about calorie labels on menus. You remember going into restaurants? I think they've been done away with now. Um, and Amanda, I'm sure, can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, a calorie label said so when you go in you go I was thinking of having the shepherd's pie that's a thousand calories or oh, I might just have the double hamburger oh, no that's 2,500 calories oh blimey but I don't have that but apparently they don't work so let's find out why Amanda very good morning to you morning Mike I was under the impression they'd been done away with these things are they still out there yeah, I mean, it's still law. It came in in April 2022. So for businesses that employed more than 250 people, right. that uh, there should be calorie labelling on menus. So that would be, you know, big pub chains, uh, big cafe chains, okay. coffee shop chains, etc. Right. So, so I, when I go to, because I was in, I was funny enough having lunch yesterday in a, in a rather nice restaurant in London. Didn't have them on there. Thank, thankfully, uh, I had a, I had a veal schnitzel. If, if anybody wants to know, uh, I have no idea how many calories were on it. But, they, but they are. So they, but you're saying they don't work. I mean, I must admit, when I did look at a menu with calories on, I kind of was conscious of them. I mean, I didn't always order because of the calories, but you were kind of conscious of it. Yeah, there's a piece of new research out of Liverpool University uh, that surveyed um, people, I think about 3,000 people before the, the legislation came in and after, just to see whether there was any significant difference in the choices they made and in right. their knowledge about about, um, about calories. And what they found was there was no significant difference overall, but actually mm. women and older people seemed to, make, um, seemed to be more knowledgeable after the calorie labelling came in. But overall, no, it didn't seem to have much impact. But I think probably just looking behind, you know, you think, well, it's possible that like when do you remember the green the traffic light system came yeah. in for food where you have green amber and red right. i think in my experience when i've been speaking to people that the manufacturers and you know re reformulate their products to try and get from a red to an amber for example from an amber to a green so they look better right. and i think that happened in in the catering industry as well if someone had like a fish and chips that was 1800 calories then they'd try and do something about it to just to get it down a bit to look a bit better so mm. there's probably some stuff going on below the surface and also you know it's possible that by uh, apps you know uh, and on on the internet and stuff where fitness apps and things they can use this data that has now been published so that Although it may not be having an impact at the restaurant level, perhaps it's ha the fact that it's impacting on people who are making choices through, you know, all those eats apps and delivery apps and yes. things like that. So it's I mean, that, that might be more. That might be where it would be more useful, actually, on the takeaway market, because that seems yeah. to be the thing that people do more of now. I mean, most restaurant owners that I know are not necessarily big chain people, but they're saying, you know, it's really hard now in the business because so many people aren't going out anymore; they're just ordering in. Mm, well, exactly. So this, this is, although this piece of research does look as though really it's not having much impact, it's possibly having an impact in a way that is less obvious. So yeah. I think, you know, the overall, from judging from the people I've been uh, reading and speaking to uh, about this research, the overall you know, sort of feeling from nutritionists and people, the scientists, is there's no point scrapping it. It's mm. there now. Leave it. But let's try and make it more useful. So it right. needs some wraparound care, if you like, so people can actually understand what those calories mean. It's no point pl plonking a list of calories number, on the menu yeah. they don't have any context for what they mean for them so i think there's a lot more to be done i mean crikey it's such a huge subject isn't it this well is, it is you know. i mean I, I also wonder whether whether in in maybe not so much maybe in the big chain restaurants but in other places it might have an effect on how the, the food is prepared you know because if you're preparing a um, you know a dish which has got i don't know 1500 calories maybe you could make it for 1200 calories you know what i mean Exactly, and, and just looking at portion sizes, but I think also the balance of this is obviously people who are going out for a really special evening, special meal, special treat, celebration, so they may, they may not want to see the calories on, on a menu, right. and if you're in a smaller establishment, then they absolutely don't have to do that anyway, and I think there's also a, a, an argument for people who've perhaps got a, you know, a, a, a disordered style of eating or an eating disorder, and they don't want to see the calories. Well, I do know within that 2022 legislation, there was actually a requirement for establishments to have a, a menu available mm. for people who don't want to see calories. So it's not actually forced on you if you don't want to have that yes. in front of you. So, yes. You know, I'm, I'm old enough to remember, this may amuse you, uh, that when I used to go to restaurants, some restaurants in London, uh, they'd have a female menu which didn't have any prices on it. <laughs> Which now sounds so bad, you know, but that was what they had. <laughs> so you didn't know how much your boyfriend was spending on you. Oh, lovely. No, I know, <laughs> I quite quaint. I'm in trouble with saying that, sorry. But... Quite quaint, but there we are. Well, Amanda, thank you very much indeed. Good to talk to you. Amanda Ursel, registered dietitian there.